So we've got a Toro time cutter here this morning. Customer brought in, said that the unit wouldn't start. They also said the wheels were locked up and it wouldn't roll freely. Uh, battery was dead on the unit, uh, probably just from trying to crank and crank and crank and it wouldn't start. This is the model 75740. And uh, it's the same as the time cutter SS4200, which is a model number 74720. Um, these units are pretty well the same they've got the same design deck a uh, little bit difference as far as the controls for the drive and stuff go but overall the same unit they've got the toro branded 452 cc engines on them uh, these are engines that are made by lonson have been out now oh i don't know maybe four years or so somewhere in that general area um, toro started to use them so Starting to see quite a few of them come in as far as uh, issues and different things like that. Uh, on that other one, I had that same issue with this yesterday. So I'm going to show you how to diagnose this and figure out why your Toro time cutter with this uh, Toro branded Lonson engine will not start. So a lot of times the first thing uh, we like to do is we like to go ahead and check the spark on the unit. So um, you can either, we've got the spark checker. Nice and easy, clip to the plug, if you can get to it here anyway. Just kind of put it on there as you're turning it over and see what it says. Uh, otherwise, you can take a 13 16 or a um, 21 millimeter and you can go ahead and take the plug out and you can hold it against the block while you turn it over. Look at the tip of the plug uh, in between it and the, uh, and the ground to the outside. You should be able to see a good color spark. So nice good blue color showing low here at this point i don't think we were having any issues with spark i think we already checked this i think it's maybe because i'm not quite close enough here to the uh, spark plug wire let's see yeah that's all it was we're getting a good green spark to it and that's how we tested it earlier also. So we know we're getting spark. Uh, right now I don't have the lever or anything up to choke, but regardless, um, it's not starting. So it'll just turn and turn and turn and turn. That's what the customer said before, you know, before the battery went dead and uh, wheels locked up, of course, because this has the electronic brake on it. If you don't have any battery uh, left to it, you can't take the brake off. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna give it some auxiliary fuel to see if the unit will start that way. Now, basically, so we know we have spark. Sounds like we have compression to the unit. We could go further into that um, if it doesn't start on the starting fluid, but we just like to throw a little bit of gum out, carbon choke cleaner. You can use starting fluid, whatever you have. You can use a little bit of gas down in the intake there to give it a little boost of fuel and see if it'll run off that. Now, if it does run and it tries to die out, we'll try to keep it started with starting fluid, but that's not the case with this one. So it starts right up in this case and it stays running. Now there's a reason for that. So we did a little further investigating. So as we're using the choke here, you can see the lever in the back move. So we're moving. But what we've got an issue with here is that the choke, the rod here that connects to the choke linkage is actually off. So it's supposed to pull this back, which in turn pulls your choke over here closed. So as you pull that, it pulls it closed. Well, this seems to pop up and out of this groove relatively easily. So that's what we have going on in this case. That's why this unit will not start is because it's actually not choking. And it was the same with the other one over there. It seems like these are starting to uh, come out more and more as far as just popping out or getting caught maybe on a branch or something like that pretty easily. So all you've got to do in this case is pop that back in there. Now I'm going to go ahead and go completely on choke to get it all the way to the end. And then I'm going to... See how I can best do this one-handed and still get you a nice good view. I believe we've got to go 
in with the back side first and then down and kind of into it so at that point what I'm going to do if you see there you can pull it just past where the um, where the mark is and then we should be able to go ahead and move that throttle back a little bit so now it's in there and now I can snap this other piece at the back side in so now that just kind of snug fits in there now this will wear out over time and you're going to have an issue where it's not going to stay in there because it's going to be bent together too far so it's going to be pinched now over time I can definitely see that happening it's just kind of a slip fit in there so this is an issue that again I've seen uh, twice in so many days on these where so now to to see that it works properly if you pull your choke it's pulling on that rod here so it's pulling right here it's pulling that choke all the way back so if we go over to the other side your choke is pulled all the way this way all the way to the front when it's choked and when it's off choke it's pushed all the way to the back now on the last one i did after i snapped this back in what i also had to do was i also had to adjust the actual cable coming from the throttle and the choke now here it's pulling back this way plenty so it's pulling to the right hand side plenty but on the other one it wasn't quite pulling the choke all the way closed here so if you if you're pulling the choke and after you get that snap back in if that does seem to be your issue and it's only coming to there you know that you need to adjust so it pulls it back all the way and chokes it all the way so how you do that is you go ahead and take this uh eight millimeter screw here loose and you pull this cable back that way a little bit so it goes to the right uh, and if you if you pull it all the way to choke and pull that back that's going to give you exactly what you need to do so you can get it adjusted properly now the only other thing i will note on this is if you don't have any issues with the unit starting uh with the starting fluid and then it runs poorly or you're getting snapping and crackling and popping or anything like that out of it you do want to address the fuel that's in the unit now a lot of times the carburetor is the issue if that's the case these carburetors are really easy to get to it's only a couple bolts to take the whole housing off there and to get down to it but if it's having any running issues after it's starting you may not be running into an issue with the choke you may be running into an issue where the fuel that's in it is an inferior quality which is causing the unit not to, to start originally even though it is choked so if that's the case what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to drain the fuel system clean the carburetor flush that all out uh, to make sure that you have good fuel going to the unit to get it started originally now this fuel line and stuff that's on here pretty bad quality in my opinion i see a lot of these uh crack and rot already and uh, they're not too old as far as uh, uh as far as fuel lines go but it's just kind of a poor quality rubber so you'll want to check that you want to check the fuel flow so if you take it off here and you're turning the unit over if you take it off right there at the at the carburetor and you turn the unit over you should get a few, a good fuel supply here out of your fuel pump now if you're not getting a good fuel supply you know either the fuel pump is bad you're not getting compression which is giving you the pulse to the line fuel filters plugged or you can also be plugged in the pickups of the tank now the fuel line goes over here and it goes up through the top on the top of the tank over here you would have to take everything apart but it has a tube that goes down in the tank where that tube goes into the tank there's an elbow a lot of times debris and dirt and bugs or whatever else inside that tank gets sucked up into that um, elbow and they'll get caught there a lot of times it takes years and years but you know pieces of stuff like this like this little piece of grass there something like that gets stuck in that elbow and can't get pulled through other things just start to gather around it next thing you know you have a pretty good restriction there and even though your unit will run for you know say 10 15 minutes sometimes half an hour eventually it'll die out because it's starving for fuel it's not pumping fuel quick enough to keep the engine supplied one of the main issues is that fuel pickup so uh, if you're having issues with it shutting down after 15 minutes half an hour something like that check that pickup check to make sure all these fuel lines are not cracked and dry rotted 
make sure that the fuel filter this one's got some good debris in it see all that in there it's a lot of debris in the bottom of that filter now we're going to go ahead and switch that out also this thing is going to get a good tune up at this point but other than that everything's good to go so hopefully that gives you some insight on what you need to know um if you can't get your unit to start on starting fluid at this point you know you've got spark you know you got good fuel you can open the valve cover and see a lot of times you get a bent push rod or something like that uh, a little less common uh, with those issues but we definitely see them uh, it's a it's a common thing on any e engine but if you pull the valve cover off this one uh, you've got to pull the the one screw also out of the muffler the two out of the valve cover at the bottom and then the two here because you've got to actually get this bracket out of the way in order to get it you know off of there it's kind of a little bit different than uh than a lot of them but uh you can check that you can also take the plug out you can make sure you're actually getting uh the piston to move up and down by sticking something soft down in there you can use a screwdriver if you're real careful and you turn it by hand up top uh, once you get the cover off that'll just tell you that everything's moving fine in there uh, that the piston is in fact moving up and down um, that gives you just a little bit better understanding of what's going on sometimes connecting rods and things will break and your engine won't actually be moving the piston won't be moving up and down um, to give you any compression so you can also turn it by hand to check that the valves are going in and out uh, make sure they're coming all the way out that should give you everything you need to know about getting your uh, toro started getting it taken care of and it won't start instance thanks for watching like and subscribe